two Crocodove nodes that work very well together are Extrude and Border. Let's right click in the media pool, new fusion composition, create, drag that into your timeline, click on the fusion tab. Okay, so let's click and drag some text out here. Press one to preview it. Pick your favorite font. And I wanna go into shading. I'm gonna click number four and enable the blue border. And I wanna go into here. I wanna to go to level and make this text. You could try a line that might give you an interesting result. Text is gonna work for me. Round the edges a little bit here. If I need to, I could extend this horizontally and vertically. I wanna give this a gradient, so click on the gradient. Let's go to mapping level, set this to text, and let's change the angle. All right, now I want to just kind of rough in a look, maybe three or four points here. Black, expand this arrow down. I don't want it to be too dark. That, and once I get this kind of how I want, I could go back into the text by scrolling up here, clicking one. Let's also make this a gradient and let's set this to line and get some different colors. And you click this first one, click the second one. Now, when I look at this, it looks really faded into the background. So I'm gonna go to blending, click on composite and check on solid. All right, that looks better. And you know what, maybe go to mapping level. Let's go to character. Let's go to the angle, adjust that a bit. And I might wanna adjust this red. It's kind of dull. Okay, standing out a bit. I could click number two, enable this outline, adjust the thickness a bit here, change it. All right, now that text stands out. So let's go back to number four. And I like the gradient, I just wanna give it a little bit more detail. I'm gonna click, 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 just add three points. The middle point, I could adjust that, make it lighter or darker. I think I'm gonna make it lighter. Maybe do the same thing over here, add a few points. And I'm trying to be fairly subtle here, but I wanna get something a little bit more interesting and I'm good with that. So also another thing to look at is the mapping size. Change that if you need to cover more of the area. Let's go with this and let's go to our next step, which is to add that extrude. So I'm gonna click on my text, shift space bar, E, X, T, R, and then enter. With this one selected, press number two, preview that over here. I'm going to, scale my text up because it's kind of small now. So I'm gonna go back to text, click on this tab up here, the size, bring this, all right, that's nice. Now I'll come back to extrude. I don't want a blue extrusion. I'm gonna click on original. I'm also gonna click on radial, click and drag on the center here and the center here, just so I can see clearly this transform node, move that. And I can see I just don't have a very long extrusion. So let's increase the length of the extrude, type in three. So now I wanna look at the light. So the light looks like it's coming from this side, the bottom is darker. As I adjust this slider, now it looks like the light is coming from below and I keep adjusting it. You'll see the light will kind of shift around here and you just gotta make some changes here until you get the right look that you want. Okay, so this looks good. A little bit darker on the bottom, a little bit lighter on the side. Now what we can do is make this text a little bit more dynamic. So I'm gonna go back to text, go to layout, and go to rotation down here and you could rotate this and that's the wrong way let me click and drag this now it looks like it's leaning back i'm gonna click and drag on the y and you'll notice if you're waiting for this thing to update it does take a while so as i'm doing this i probably want to turn off the extrusion so click on extrude turn this off now go back to text we can have a lot more flexibility here so something like that something like that can mess with the Z a little bit, but it's gonna make things look like they're off at a bad angle. That works for me. Also, maybe while we're here, we could move this up to the left a little bit. Now we could come back to extrude, turn that on. Okay, nice. Now let's give this a little bit of a lighting effect. We do that with the Crocodove node called border. So shift space, B-O-R-D. All right, there you go. Let's press two to preview that. So. Nothing is happening because nothing is turned on here. And I wanna turn on inner shadow. So drop down this arrow, click on enable inner shadow. And you see we are getting this kind of shadow look here on the left. Let's click this arrow for color, pick a color here. And I see the border isn't exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna click and drag to select both border and extrude. And I'm gonna detach border from here and reattach it back here. And you can do that all in one step. If you hold on shift and you drag this, it's gonna detach. And I'm still holding down shift as I move it over here. And when I see this line light up because my arrow is right on it, I let go. Now you can see we've got the border on the original text. We'll preview the extrude later. But what I wanna do here 
to see things clearly. I could take the inner shadow blur size and bring that down and I can click and drag to move these. And once you do, you'll see the green crosshair. You could just drag this so that we're getting just the upper left corner. And just remember, as I move down, I'm going to see the border on the top part. As I move this up, I'm going to see the border on the bottom part. So it's inverse as far as your movement goes. Same thing for the left and right. So just keep that in mind and you kind of have to think backwards. And people have always told me I'm a backwards thinker anyway, so it works perfectly. So now that it's in the right spot, I'll set blur size up. Okay, so now let's click on extrude, press two to preview that. We got a lighting effect. Now what I wanna do is add a second one. I'm gonna click border, control C, control V, and I'm gonna press two. So I preview that over here. I don't have to wait for the extrude. This one, I'm gonna make it red. I'm going to turn off the blur again so I can see it more clearly. Try and grab thing. This one, I'm giving it a little bit more thickness before I start blurring it. And you can see we got the, the yellowish, we got the red. Let's click on the extrude, press two to see if this looks like something worth keeping. All right, so the red is really taken over. I also think maybe we wanna put this on after the fact. So like we did before, I'm gonna hold on shift and drag this out. This time though, I'm gonna click the output of the extrude and drop it onto the border. And with the border selected, press two to preview that. So now we're cooking with nuclear fission. We got the yellow mixing with the red. And then what you would probably wanna do is come back to this border and make some adjustments. You gotta be careful that you grab the right one. If you're not sure, you could just click and drag in here. So you can see that's a huge difference. So be careful as you place these, make it pretty subtle. And if you get really close to what you want, you can come in and adjust these numbers by holding control and dragging to be very precise. And then obviously you could change the colors if that suits you. Another thing is if you want this to be more subtle, you can drag the transparency slider up here, or if you want it in full force, there you have it. And don't forget, click and drag your eyedropper if you wanna match colors. And then if you really wanna have fun, you're gonna add some animation by going to extrude, clicking on the extrude tab of the extrude node and you could animate the length. You could also go to your text and go to layout, animate the rotation. Just be careful you don't flip it past 180 degrees or else you're gonna start seeing the back and things are not gonna make sense anymore. So that's probably about as far as you wanna push it. Push it real good.